All right, now I've got my review of the new movie, The Creator. This is from writer-director Gareth Edwards. This is only his fourth film, believe it or not. He brought out Monsters, Godzilla, of course, Star Wars Rogue One, which he's most famous for, and now he's making his own sci-fi epic. And oh my God, is this film absolutely beautiful. This is clearly a movie that's taken great inspiration from classics like Blade Runner and a lot of what Lucas brought to the Star Wars universe, and also all the lessons that Gareth Edwards, who really began his career in visual effects and has an innate understanding of the technologies available to him. The Creator is a movie about technology and our integration with artificial intelligence. So it's unbelievably prescient and topical. It's also exhilarating and kinetic and unforgettable. He's kind of crafted this techno-punk, cyberpunk fusion with a Vietnam War epic where we've got humans fighting AI because there's this huge calamity that happens at the beginning of the film. A nuclear bomb is exploded in Los Angeles and the AI is responsible for it. So the US military amps up and goes to war against the AI, but the AI has some sympathetic allies in humans in Asia. And so this almost becomes a fight in the jungle, which kind of echoed a little bit of the Battle of Scarif from Rogue One, where people are running through jungles and it's part human and part robotic or full robotic fighting these U.S. military people, which looks like they might have popped out of James Cameron's Aliens film or something like that. There are lots of just propulsive, explosive war scenes right from the beginning. This is a relentless movie in terms of action and explosion and visual cacophony. Like, there's just so much stimulation and so many things to look at. But it all feels so believable and ingrained and authentic and and the textures and tapestry of it all is just overwhelming. Like you're just in awe of what these artists have synthesized and put together. And it was very weird for me to come to this movie, obviously with AI floating all around us in every news article, but I just played through Cyberpunk and reviewed the Phantom Liberty DLC and was just astounded by the quality of that game, which echoes a lot of that same kind of xenophobia and integration with computers and artificial intelligence. And the visual imagery in Cyberpunk is also kind of similar to some of the visual imagery in The Creator. They both obviously stand on their own, and even though this echoes things that we've seen in things like Blade Runner and maybe a little Akira and Tron and all kinds of other stuff. It feels completely like Gareth Edwards' own baby. And what was interesting for me was to see this movie with my family. My wife and my daughter came and also one of my daughter's friends came. And I put myself into their headspace for a second and reflected upon the fact that I saw Blade Runner when I was a bit too young. I was probably about 11 or 12 or something like that when I saw Blade Runner. And this is kind of a new generation's Blade Runner. It's very topical. And there's similar themes across Blade Runner and, and the creator as well, just like there is in Battlestar Galactica, like humans integrating and working alongside and trusting technology and whether we can trust technology is a big part of, I guess, 21st century concern and thought. Now, it's not a perfect film. I feel like there is a director's cut waiting to be made because there's this relationship between this child AI and this soldier played by John David Washington. And the performances are fantastic. It's Madeline Una Voiles playing the kid, and man, she's incredible. Just so emotive and honest and fragile, but also incredibly powerful too. Knows when to just be still and, and sort of enjoy that moment. And John David Washington goes through some really dark and heavy stuff in this film and you feel his pain. And there are obvious tragic paint strokes all the way through this thing. These are heavy, heavy ideas here where robots are fighting humans. But man, it's riveting. You can't take your eyes off it. The, I did feel like the relationship between the kid and the soldier happened a little too quickly and we got emotional beats a little sooner than we deserved them. I also felt like for as large as the concept is and as important as the missions are, these warriors going to fight the AI because there's this super weapon that could destroy everything, it felt a little restrained and contained as well. Like it felt too much like we were focused on a just one chunk of the military might as opposed to the totality of it, which is the difference when you see a Star Wars film where budget isn't even a factor and we just scale up to just enormity, just like beyond what we can comprehend. And that's what Gareth Edwards had to deal with 
on Rogue One. It's different this time. We're really focused in on not a handful, but not tons and tons of characters. It does give the actors some meaty sequences to jump into and enjoy, like Allison Janney is terrific in this film, and I also love Gemma Chan, who plays John David Washington's wife, and there's a really kind of truthful relationship there, and a poignant one. You can feel the pain of it. I'm talking about this thing like it's an art movie, and in a lot of ways it is, you know? Like, it's definitely an action film, but it feels indie, it feels small and hand-built, but the enormity of the concept is on full display, and it's made at the highest quality levels. And the score from Hans Zimmer is incredible, and there's lots of great arrangements of music that you have heard before interwoven into everything. I'm not going to spoil that. This is just one of those movies that's going to grow in estimation and appreciation over time, and it's going to be interesting. Maybe it's going to be a huge success, and there'll be more of this, a sequel to it, or some other kinds of stories built off of it, but uh, you should not miss the creator. It's not perfect. I right, definitely have some quibbles, but I'm never going to forget this film. The creator gets an 8.5 out of 10. 